The collapse of atheism in the 20th century applies to political and social ethics as much as it does to the various branches of science. The overthrow of communism is one of the most important examples of this. Communism was the major political result of the atheistic deviation of the 19th century. The founders of the ideology, Marx, Engels, Lenin, Trotsky, and Mao, all adopted atheism as their most fundamental principle. Communist regimes wished to spread atheism throughout society and destroy religious beliefs. Terrible oppression was aimed at religious communities, particularly Muslims in Stalin's Russia, Red China, Cambodia, Albania, and certain Eastern Bloc countries. This even turned into genocide. Yet that bloody atheist system collapsed in a surprising manner in the late 1980s. What was actually collapsing was atheism itself. The American writer Patrick Glynn has this to say on the subject. As historians penetrate the circumstances of the communist collapse, it is becoming clear that the Soviet elite was itself in the throes of an atheistic crisis of faith. Having lived under an atheistic ideology, the Soviet system suffered a radical demoralization in every sense of that term. People, including the ruling elite, lost all sense of morality and all sense of hope. One interesting sign of this atheistic crisis of faith in the Soviet system was the reforms President Mikhail Gorbachev tried to implement. From the day Gorbachev came to power, he took an interest in moral issues as well as economic reforms. He began by initiating a campaign against alcoholism, for example. He employed the old Marxist-Leninist concepts for a while in order to raise the morale of society. But seeing that this would serve no purpose, he began to speak of God in some of his speeches in the final years of his regime despite the fact that he himself was an atheist. Yet these insincere words of faith were also no use, and the crisis of faith in Soviet society continued to grow. The result was the sudden collapse of the giant Soviet empire. Communism was not alone in the 20th century. Fascism, another product of the 19th century atheist philosophies, also collapsed. Fascism was a philosophy that can be regarded as a synthesis of atheism and paganism. Friedrich Nietzsche, regarded as the ideological founder of fascism, praised paganism, fiercely attacked the divine religions, and even described himself as an antichrist. Nietzsche and Martin Heidegger, one of his disciples, were the main sources of inspiration behind Nazi Germany. These two thinkers' atheist philosophy, that was so full of praise for violence, gave birth to the terrible savagery of Nazi Germany. Once Hitler and his closest followers, who were all atheists, had turned Germany into a state of fear, they embarked on the bloodiest war in history. That slaughter, known as World War II, cost the lives of 55 million people. Members of different ethnic groups such as Jews, Gypsies and Slavs and people who fell foul of Nazi ideology, particularly religious figures, were exterminated in the concentration camps the Nazis set up during the war years.
Another social result of atheism emerged in liberal Western societies in the second half of the 20th century. Young Westerners raised in Christian families developed an angry anti-religious movement under the influence of atheist ideologues such as Darwin, Marx, and Freud. That movement developed rapidly in the United States and Western Europe in the 1960s and gave birth to the sexual revolution and the hippie dream that accompanied it. The hippies believed that they could find happiness by means of unlimited drugs and sex. These young people who poured onto the streets to the words of John Lennon's song, Imagine, in which he spoke of a world with no countries and no religion too, were actually undergoing a mass deception. In fact, a world without religion actually brought them to an unhappy end. The hippie leaders of the 1960s either killed themselves or died from drug-induced comas in the early 1970s. Most of the young people who found themselves on the missing list on police station walls were the victims of drugs. Those young people of the same generation who turned to violence found themselves facing violence. The 1968 generation who turned their backs on God and religion and imagined they could find salvation in such concepts as revolution or love ruined both themselves and their societies. The information we have so far briefly summarized clearly shows that atheism is undergoing an inevitable collapse. In other words, mankind is turning to God. This truth is not restricted to the political and scientific fields we have discussed here. From politicians to film and pop stars, many opinion formers in Western society are more religious than before. There are now many people who have seen the truth and believe in God after living for years as atheists. That is what makes our age such an important one. Atheism, which people have tried for hundreds of years to portray as the way of reason and science, is proving to be mere irrationality and ignorance. Materialist philosophy attempts to use science for its own ends, and yet it is science that is actually destroying it. It is inevitable that that should happen. Atheism is the greatest irrationality possible. The Quran stresses the error of those who deny the existence of God. How can you reject God when you were dead and then he gave you life? Then he will make you die and then give you life again. Then you will be returned to him. It is he who created everything on the earth for you and then directed his attention up to heaven and arranged it into seven regular heavens. He has knowledge of all things. <laughs> 